Did you know that your EV charge point may be harboring a dark secret that prevents your car from charging as quickly or as effectively as it might do? Stay tuned to find out what it is. We've come a long way with EV charge points in a very short period of time. From units that were a bit bulky and designed to prioritise functionality over form, they've become smaller, smarter and, dare I say it, sexier. The Evo from Rolex meets all these criteria without sacrificing functionality and, all the while, still keeps the electrician at the centre of it all. So. Is it worthy of your consideration? We've got one to have a go at installing, so let's get going. This house came with rather an old EV charge point right at the back of the garage where it's not much use to me, and all things considered, it's a bit out of date. I can't get inside it to check, and online resources for it are a little bit expunged, so I'm guessing there's no pen fault protection or RDCDD and so forth. There is an RCD protecting it and about three other circuits, and that is a type AC. So yeah, definitely time for an upgrade, because the Evo includes a pen fault detection device, and a 30 milliamp type A RCD, and a 6 milliamp DC detector. We're going to install this outside where I can actually access it, and the first thing to be said is that I'm happy to actually have this on show. It's really nicely styled with its sloping faces and a centralised universal socket with cable lock feature for a tethered option. It features this lovely glowing LED ring around it that not only looks great, but also acts as an indicator for what the charger's doing. The LEDs provide over 30 self-diagnostic sequences to help you pinpoint any issues instantly, and you can even dim them down if they're too bright. On opening the 100% recyclable packaging that you'll find across the entire range, there's a couple of things to note. First of all, that there's things hidden away inside here that you'll need to hang on to. Under the charger is the instruction manual, don't be put off by its thickness, it's very straightforward, there's just multiple languages in there. There's also two RFID cards, you can set the charger up so that it uses these as an option to control charging, perfect if you don't want multiple family members messing around with the app settings. Then there's a CT clamp safely placed under here which we'll retrieve and look at in a minute, and also a high quality accessory fixing kit, but over here is a handy little Torx head angle driver for undoing the easy to open lid, there's just two security screws under the lid here to undo. Now we're into the bones of the installation, the lid comes away and one thing I love about this is that there's no cable connecting up the LED on the front of the charger, so it's not going to flap about during the installation and get scratched up. It connects via these pogo terminals on the body that make a connection to the contacts on this little PCB, a small touch that shows the thought that goes into the installation process from Rolex. These actually serve a dual purpose as they also act as tamper security which is fully compliant with UK smart charge point regulations. The brains of the charger just slides up and out giving you a lightweight backplate to work with. There's four entry point options, one on the rear that would need drilling out. I really like the fact that it remains sealed on the back unless you need it. There's also a top entry option that's kept nice and neat with this closed grommet. You really only want to use that one if you're doing an internal installation, but if you have to use it outside, make sure you seal that back up again after the cable's gone in. Then there's the option we'll be using today, the entry on the base here. It's just a matter of cutting the grommet to the right width for the cable, and then it's ready to pass through. Now we've got a number of options of cable that we could install. We've got EV Ultra here from Doncaster Cables, and it's the tough sheathed version without the SWA. We've got one here with the data cable contained within it for the data transfer, but we're going to be relying on Wi-Fi so we can get away without the data cable. And we could have gone for Armoured, and if we had chosen to use Armoured, what's really good is that the Rolex charger has a little adapter that goes into the bottom of the back plate here and allows you to terminate an Armoured cable into it. However, because we don't need to use an Armoured cable, we're just going clip direct on the surface here, we can just use the tough sheath from Doncaster Cables. And finally, there's a dedicated entry point for the data and C cables. We'll be using Wi-Fi to make the internet connection for this unit, but we'll definitely use that entry point for the current monitoring. Mounting the back plate is easy with the pre-drilled fixing holes and the integrated spirit level here. Just before we replace the brains, looking on the back there's this surface that's covered in raised fins. These have been designed to help dissipate the heat generated by the current flowing through the charger. This is the dark little secret of home EV charging we mentioned at the start. It's simply that for many charge points, if the ambient temperature starts to get too hot, they'll dial back the charging current until it cools down again. All very sensible, but also quite annoying if you need the charger to do its job. Realising this, Rolex have designed the Evo to operate effectively at ambient temperatures of up to 50 degrees C. As the hottest recorded temperature of all time in the UK is 40.3 degrees C, we'll have much bigger problems before this charger starts limiting the current during charging due to temperature. Continuing with the installation, the brains just slot back in and then we can look at connecting up the cable. There's strain relief in the form of this cable clamp and then the mains connections are made via Vargo lever arm terminals, so there's no messing around with over tightening screws and stripped threads. It makes installation so much quicker and easier. Now speaking of connections, we need to think about getting the current transformer hooked up. It comes with a nice long lead to limit the number of times that we need to extend it, 
and it simply clips over the line conductor on the incoming meter tails. This will monitor the amount of current the property draws and make sure that the charger never overloads the main fuse. At the charger end, the current transformer comes pre-wired with an RJ45 plug, which simply connects into the socket on the right-hand side here. And that's it, installation done. While we're speaking about CTs and current monitoring though, we're in a really nice position here where this property has a four kilowatt solar array that is currently generating lots of lovely current and it would be great just to dump that straight into the EV when there's an excess. Well, we can do that by getting a solar CT kit from Rolex, connecting it around a line conductor that brings the current down from the inverter and then plugging it into the charger. But ah, I hear you cry. We've already used up the CT connection in the charge point. Rolex have solved this problem by providing us with a splitter alongside the solar CT clamp. So we just plug both CTs into that and then use this jumper cable to connect into the charger. Simple. That leads us nicely onto the three charging modes the charger has. The first is charge now. Once the charge is initiated, the car will be told that it can have the full amount of power, which is usually 7.4 kilowatts. The electricity will be pulled from solar, the grid, or a mixture. It allows for fast and immediate charge. Up next is eco mode. In this mode, your car is charged at full power, again, usually 7.4 kilowatts within your schedule times, for example, off-peak hours. If charging outside of the schedule, the charge will use only leftover solar power once the house has taken what it requires. If there's not enough leftover solar, the car won't charge until solar improves or the scheduled hours kick in. And finally, we have Eco Plus. This mode pulls only from solar. Again, the charger will only use leftover solar once the house has taken what it needs. If there is no excess solar or less than six amps, then the car will not charge until more is available. With the Evo app, users have full control of their charger, including the ability to set charging schedules and integrate with smart tariffs to save on off-peak rates. For Intelligent Octopus Go, the Evo offers full integration, automatically charging at the lowest overnight rate, and is compatible with all other smart charging tariffs. Now, just before we pop the lid back on, let's look at one more absolutely critical feature in here, and that's the thing tucked under this little screw cap. If we undo that, you can see there's a tiny little micro switch. That's the test button for the built-in RCD. The built-in RCD. If that sets off an alarm bell in your head following the misfortunes of some other charger manufacturers and built-in RCDs, relax. The RCD in here is fully compliant with the regulations and that's why it actually has this test button as part of that compliance. So if you install the cable to this charger in the right way, either clip direct or in SWA or some other similar fashion, you can omit the RCD you'd normally require for additional protection for a twin and earth cable buried in a wall. That makes your installation much, much simpler. Now we can put the lid back on and power it up. Commissioning the charge point is super easy as well. First, open up the Rolex Connect app and pick Evo from the device list. Next, grab your phone's camera and scan the barcode on the side of the unit. When the app asks for it, type in the four digit pin, you'll find it in your instruction manual or on the charge module, and you're ready to link up with the charger. Now you'll see the specification screen. Here's where you set the max output, choose the grid type, and pop in the details for the main and circuit fuses. Once that's done, just hit next step. You'll then land on the back office selection screen. It usually defaults to Rolex Evo, which is native OCPP 1.6 compliant, but if you'd rather use a different back office, open the drop down menu, pick the one you want, and the app will fill in the details for you. Tap next step to move on. On the network setup page, you can choose between Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or if you're using the three-phase model, 4G, enter your network credentials, check the signal strength to make sure it's solid, and start the configuration. When that's finished, it's time for a quick test. Make the necessary connections and let it run. When you see a success notification pop up, tap finish, and you're good to go. Your charge point is all set. Is this the easiest to install, simplest to commission, best looking charger on the market? With its five year warranty, it's definitely a strong contender and you can take advantage of the Evo installer loyalty incentive scheme. Basically, if you install 15 Evo chargers, you'll get the next one completely free. Check out more on the Rolex Evo in this video right here when the good folks from Rolex joined us on our fortnightly eFix TV live stream or click the link in the show notes for additional information. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.